morning everyone. I thought we'd do something that's very classical and elegant for today's project and I came across this wonderful photograph from Susie Hazelwood. Um, it's really pretty. It's royalty free so you can go into Pexels and download it if you wish. Um, now to suit this type of photograph I thought it'd be really nice to show you and get you building up some graphite powder skills as well as just general drawing skills and portrait knowledge. So you will need a smooth piece of paper for a project like this. It doesn't have to be a high GSM, but it does need to be smooth. Also be careful of a highly um, recycled pulp in your paper because it can mean that when you're pressing down on your pencil, it indents the surface a bit too easily and can cause you problems if you want to rub it out. The mark, you can't rub it out because it's just in a little valley way on the paper. So try and go for a decent grade manufacturer, maybe that's the word that best suits paper. Um, I have some pencils, so I've got a HB pencil which I always recommend all my students starting off a drawing with. It's a nice, I call it not too hard, not too soft, Goldilocks pencil. And this is a Stadler which um, is for graphic design but personally I find it really good for fine art drawings of hyper-realistic portraits. I also have a, a B pencil, so this is a 4B, you could use a 2B or a 6B if you want to, depends on how confident you are. Remember the higher the number, the darker the graphite's going to go. Um, and I just thought I would throw in there a H pencil. The H pencils are particularly good for doing hair. Um, H hasn't got much graphite in it, it's more binder, so it's very hard and that means that you can keep the pencil to a strong point and get in there for some really beautiful details. Eyelashes and things like that can be also quite good with a H pencil. Now to go along with that, I have a eraser, so I've got a standard eraser here and I do have a putty rubber as well. Um, I have and like to use, I've kind of caught onto these mono zeros which are quite handy. Basically they're a rubber in a pen and you, you push down the end and, and fresh rubber comes out. Um, this is quite a fine one, it's a 2.3 and that means that I can get into fine detail, which is helpful. Um, have a nice good quality sharpener because you've got to keep that pencil nice and sharp and you're going to need a brush to pick up some of your graphite powder and apply it to the surface along with the brush a little bit of tissue and it doesn't have to be anything flashy just a bit of toilet tissue i picked up there so let's get going shall we now to start off with i think it's probably wise and there is two different techniques to this for you to start with a drawing so that we can walk through the basic proportions and get everything in the right place you should be holding your pencil towards the end and first of all plot down the overall egg shape you're going to have for the head. Now when you plot down an egg shape for a head it always ends up much bigger than the head will be at the end of the drawing. So go a little bit bigger than you want. The idea of this egg shape is first of all to get the scale and the position on the piece of paper. Okay, you can see here I'm going a bit darker than I should because I want you to be able to see the lines. Once you've got that egg shape, you'll want that line of symmetry. Now she's got her head tilted, you can see there. I need to get the same angle over here. And because the head is tilted, that means the eye line is tilted. You see how that eye line's going downhill? Just like so. Okay, let me just check. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Once I've got that in, I'm going to whack in a nose. So it's kind of roughly, and I'm doing it by eye, you can measure it. I've gone over proportions before. And the mouth position. And I'm going far darker than any of you should go because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. You should be much lighter. Then I'm just going to get in that neck position just to check that I've got everything in and that her body isn't going to fall off the back. So it should be around here. And then that kind of droops down with her shoulder. Now her hair is going to be kind of coming in around here. And she has got a lot of hair, this lady. So it's going to sit in there. Now I've got those basics, I'm going to start plotting everything out. Okay, so let's slide my hand down and get a little bit more accurate at the drawing. 
Personally, I like to get the nose in because if you get the eyes in and you find you put the nose in and it's all too long, it, it can be a real pain to juggle everything around. You put the nose in, it's easy to judge the gap between the sides of the nostril and the eye and check that your measuring is correct. put that shadow and I'm gonna bring that shadow in here now I reckon her eyes a little bit lower than I have it I'm gonna put that eye in there that means that she's gonna end up with an eye sitting over here and I'm gonna use that for my eyebrow like I said remember that I'm going much deeper than you should be going I'm going to take my eraser and just go around and clean this up a bit because this is all thinking and guidelines you're going to find that you need to bring things around sharpen bits up and maybe move things over a little bit to the left or to the right as long as you've got them in the basic area, that's what's important. You can see that I'm not investing a huge amount of time in this layer. I'm more interested in getting this correct than any detail laid down. Right, so you should be aiming for something like this, um, mine's quite a quick sketch. You can see that I'm a little bit messy, you can see there's all these guidelines. So go with your eraser and make sure you take out all those just loose drawing marks where you were thinking earlier and um, get a nice crisp linear form of drawing that's accurate and well observed. Right, so once you've got this and you've got your basic linear drawing, then you need to take your charcoal powder, charcoal, graphite powder, dip your brush into it and start just painting it, the dry brush, onto the surface of your picture. Wherever you're going to have the skin tones, you're going to build up a darker tone. Just um, of course I don't forget the background, so I'm going to work all over here, spreading it out, Put down into the eye. I need to build up the background and the hair tone, just bring this down. And once you put down a fair bit, as you can see I've just done there, you can grab your tissue shape it into a comfortable kind of thick piece of tissue and then start working it into the drawing. Once I've done that, then I'm going to take my putty rubber and I'll shape it to a point and I'm going to start lifting off those highlights. Now, when you're new to this, the easiest way to deal with it is to deal with the areas that are quite large. You can also, once the putty rubber's got a little bit of graphite on it, you can use that to just fudge out the edge of a highlight and make it look more natural. You don't want too much of a crisp edge or it's going to look fake. Now, 
Hopefully you can see that tail change, it's starting to come. I need to build up a little bit more, so I'm going to grab a little bit more um, charcoal powder and work that up into the areas that are darker, so you can see these very strong dark areas. And then at this point you need to start working up your pencils and you might find that you want to jump to like a 2B or a 4B. <coughs> I've got a 4B here. I'm going to start building up the dark area. Also you can see immediately as soon as I go to lean there I need to stop and lean on a clean piece of paper and smudge my drawing because it's going to end up getting to the point now where it's getting quite smudgy. Now I want to build up some darker areas of tone, so I've got a nice sharp 4B pencil and I'm going to just start building up some dark around here, get a feel for it. You'll find that you can put down the pencil work, just like I'm doing here. Then you might want to grab your tissue and you can blend it out. And they're going to look fairly dark at this stage, but don't worry because all you have to do Take your putty rubber and start lifting off and working out those highlights again. Yeah. It's going to be just building up the detail now once you've got this sorted out. So, you know, you might want to work in the background just to get a feel for things. Let's see, setting out the edge of the face. Or you might want to start on the features, whatever you feel comfortable doing. And then as you soon you find you're comfortable doing bits, you can just rub in some of your pencil work so that you get a softer, hazel t hazy tone. And it will appear more natural. Try not to use your fingers when doing this. Try to do it with a tissue or a blending tool. Right, so you can see here I've got roughly her face down, it could be worked up to a much higher level but it gives you a good idea of how you need to work into it and keep building up those layers. The more you do it and the more accurate you are with your tonal observations and getting those tones just correct in the right place, the better the article will look. Now to build up her hair, and like I said remember that you do need to have a piece of paper just to stick your hand on. Well, you're going to start smudging it at this stage. I'm just going to smooth that out. What I would say is you need to use a soft pencil and then go in with a harder pencil. Um, so we're going to just do like we normally do, use a HB and then build up from HB into a H to give us some finer hairlines. So there's a HB I've got. And I'm going to start building up the hair. You can see here, let's just work on a small bit to start off with. We've got a section of our hair coming in. Now your pencil needs to be nice and sharp and you need to be trying to get the hair as the contour lines well, as the hair wraps around the head. Trying to leave the highlights and the reflections of light on certain parts of the hair. Gradually building it up.
trick is not to fall into the whole kind of doing everything in straight lines and that it needs to wrap around the head. Now over here it gets very dark so you could just shade this out and then we'll tone that in. This hair coming in over here. You can see how I've got the point of my pencil and I'm really using that to create some more fine lines to represent the hair. Darker tone, um, now obviously, to do the darker tone, you're looking at using your soft pencil, so your 4 or 6B, kind of that dark tone, real nice and quick. And then you can work that dark tone into the hair. Right, I'm going to leave my example there so that you can see how I've built up those layers. Basically by laying down that graphite powder then working into them with a pencil. Um, the trick is to keep your pencil grades limited and not to overwork it. You can see here it's about being accurate with your observation of where the shadows are and when you're rubbing with your tissue to wipe around the contours of the form that you're trying to represent whether that be hair or a nose or a cheek but to be delicate and accurate and to build it up slowly and gently the more you build it up the more realistic it's going to look this is a very early stage but you can see that with pencil work it takes a lot of time and effort to get it correct i hope you've enjoyed it and that you've done really well i'm sure you probably have um, and have a go at some of the other pictures with this practice makes perfect see you next week bye